In this video, I want to show you how you can change and update records that are inside SharePoint from inside Power Apps using a gallery, not edit form, not regular text controls, gallery. We all know that we can put whatever the control that we want inside the gallery, almost whatever. But in this example, we want to replace the typical text labels with text input. And then we want to have one single save button on the screen that when we push that button, it captures all the changes in the entire gallery and push it back to our SharePoint or any other database that you may use in that app. Let's see how we can do that. Inside SharePoint, I created a list called Department Budget. Just like any other SharePoint list, it has ID. I renamed the title to GL account. I also put a year and the rest is a budget for four different quarters and they're all currency. Now I brought the entire list inside Power Apps and inside this app, I connected that to a gallery. And inside this gallery for the GL account and for the year, that they were not supposed to be editable, I used label, while for the budget columns, I used a text input. And I just set the default values to this item dot Q1 budget, Q2 budget, Q3 budget, so on and so forth. On the top of the screen, I have two buttons. One of them is save button. The other one is refresh button. At the moment, they don't have anything, but the objective is to make changes in all the rows that we want here then we can push the save button and it should push all the changes inside SharePoint or we should be able to push the refresh button and it reloads everything from SharePoint. So basically all the changes are lost and we say, sorry, that was a mistake. We didn't mean to change the data. So get it back from SharePoint again. But before we start, this video is actually a sample lecture from my course on Udemy called Master Microsoft Power Apps Table Functions. And if you are lucky to check this video before March 30th, 2024, just scan this code and get this course for free. And if you already have this course in your arsenal and you're telling me, Ali, I have finished that course, I cannot recall that. Yes, you're right, because this section is recently added. And it is one of the lectures in project seven. So let's start the work. This is the time. Time to show everybody how good you are with Power Apps table functions. We want to add one save button that when I push this, it can save all the unsaved records inside SharePoint. Before we push that, everything stays here. So we go to our app, take tree, and the control names are Q12, Q22, Q32, so on and so forth. So Nothing has changed when it comes to our UI. The only thing that I have done, I just added the tiny save icon here. So let me call it ICO underscore save all. Tab away and I just save it. But let's see how we can do this. We have seen the other two approaches. We tried auto save that as soon as the user tabs away from a text box, it saves it to SharePoint. We discussed the issues that we have with that approach. We also learn how we can effectively add a save and undo for every row and how they work. We realize it's a very efficient way of doing this. The only issue is that after the user is done, he or she has to go to every single one of the updated rows and push the save button. We also managed to enable and disable the save and update buttons to show the user which records require attention before he or she closes the app. Now, we want to have one button that can pick up all the updated rows and save it. And this one adds a little bit challenge here. Here is our strategy. We have a list inside SharePoint that is directly connected to a Power Apps gallery on the screen with some text inputs on it. But if you come here and change anything here, we are changing the text inside these text inputs. So nothing happens. If you want to go back to the gallery and capture all these changes, it's not possible because we cannot really identify controls inside the gallery. So we got to do something else about it. And this is our strategy. We want to take a copy of this finance demo and bring it inside Power Apps. But we really don't need the entire thing. We only need the columns that we want to update and one ID for tracking. So basically, let's make another table on the top of it. 
I want to put it in a collection. And probably you notice that I also changed the column names. So item ID represents ID. GL account and year, I don't care. I just need a unique ID to work with. Q1 budget turned into Q1, Q2 budget, Q2, Q3, Q4. And I also added another column, which is a flag, and it's gonna track which record has been modified. So when I push the save button, these records should be pushed into SharePoint. I don't want to update every record inside SharePoint. And to create this, I want to get rid of the columns that I don't need. So I need show columns function. I don't want to use the original names. I want to use some new names. So I use rename columns. And I also need to add another extra column here called is modified. So I use add columns to achieve this. Now, when I have the local collection inside my Power Apps, every time a user changes something, we update our local collection unchanged because this is not attached to this gallery it's not going to give any hiccups to the user. And as soon as I do that, I also set the is modified field to true for the record that has been updated. Then when the user clicks on this save all, we patch the department budget inside SharePoint only for the records that is modified is true here. And we have all the values that need to go to SharePoint. Now it's your turn. If you want to challenge yourself, pause the video, get back and do it yourself. If you don't feel like that, feel free to follow me. So the first thing, I want to have a button here and I use reload. So I want to refresh everything. Basically, it's gonna be my undo button. So if there is any change here, it has to reset everything. And right in the beginning, probably that's a good point to start. And this button is gonna help me a lot during my development process. I just changed the color to white so it is better visible and I just save it. When someone pushes this button, first thing I want to refresh the data source, which is gonna be my department budget. Then I need to create my collection here. So this is how I do it. I come back here, let me just expand it. I want to use clear collect. For the collection name, I call it call update tracker, call update tracker. And now what I put inside it is gonna be my challenge. Let me just close this one, take it to the next line. And I want to put this guy here and start writing the formula that creates this out of this. First thing we want to use show columns. So I come back here and I say show columns from department budget. And the columns that I want to show are ID, Q1 budget, comma. And for the other columns, I can simply go ahead and add them. Control C, Control V, one, two, three. So Q1 budget, Q2 budget, Q3 budget, and Q4 budget. Now it is not happy, it complains about the column names because what we are using here is the display name while this guy does not like the display name. If you remember, you, you need to look up the static name. And for this one, I just get rid of the space. And even if you move the mouse cursor over it, it gives you an indicator of what is available inside SharePoint as the internal name that you can use. So I can simply get rid of this and get rid of this. We are happy we have all the columns that we need for the show column. Now we need to rename these columns, right? So here I can say rename columns and rename columns that come from the show columns. Right after that, I can put my rename column. So I would say for the ID, rename it to item ID. For Q1 budget, rename it to Q1. And the same way we can do Q2, Q3, and Q4, right? C, B, V, V, V. All right. Q1, Q1, rename Q2 to Q2, and Q3 to Q3. And you guessed it, Q4 is gonna be Q4. 
and I just close the bracket. So at the moment, if I just save this guy and run it, and I click on this button, you will see I have a collection here. And if I expand it, you will see you have item ID, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Fantastic. We are almost there. So the last thing that we want, we need to add an extra column, which is, is modified, and we can simply use add columns for this. So let me click on format text. So everything looks a little bit better. Expand it. And right before rename columns, I can say add columns. Open the bracket and I go to the end of rename. And right after that, I add the new column name, which is going to be is modified is modified and I set its value to false and I close this bracket. Let's test and run it again. Click expand. Let's see what we have inside this guy. Now I can shrink it, double click, expand, and you will see I have is modified and all the other columns as we planned. So we produced something like this, and that was a good practice of converting one type of table to another using the table functions. The rest is easy. Now I can say if someone updates this, so on change, I can say patch just like before, but this time we are not going to the budget department. We go to the collection. So I can say patch call update tracker. This one is going to update Q1. First, we want to pick the right record here. So we need to look it up using the ID. I can say look up the record that I'm looking for from call update tracker. And I'm looking for the one that its item ID is equal to this item Dot ID. And this item refers to the row that I'm working on it inside this gallery. So close. So I picked up the row that I want to update inside this collection. And then is update. So I want to update Q1 because this text refers to Q1 and a value because Q1 is a number while text input returns text. So I get self dot text. Close for the value, close the curly bracket for the item, and close the bracket for the patch. Save. As always, I would like to click on format just to make sure the syntax is correct and everything goes good. So I just copy this guy and I go to the second one again, unchange. And I just paste this guy here. The only thing is that now self is going to update Q2. Then third one, the same thing. So unchange, it's going to be the same thing. I update Q3 this time and exactly the same way. I go back here and I update the unchange and I want to update Q4 for this guy. Let me just save it. And are we missing something? Remember, on change, we need to update the local connection. We also need to set the is modified to true. So I go back here for every single one of them. In the end of this, I can say comma is modified, set it to true. And I need to do it for all the other text inputs. Sorry, my bad. So this one, I add it here. Second one. Again, I add it here. There we go. And third one, again, expand and I add it here. All right. Let's try and see if it works. So I refresh it. And for the second row, 1500, I remove one zero and tab away. I remove one zero tab away. And that's it. So let me go back to my collection and see what I got inside it. 
I can see this collection from wherever I want. And under this collection, the second row is modified, is set to true, and all the values are captured properly. Instead of 1500, I have 150 and 10, beautiful. So this step is complete. Now I need to define the functionality for the save all. And that is easy now. I can come back here and I click on save button. And here I just need to use for all. And for all is going to look into the records from call update tracker, but not all of them. It's looking for the ones that they are modified. So this record dot is modified because we don't want to update all the records. Then whatever we want to do happens here. So let me just close this bracket and here comes my patch. I say patch. I want to patch the department budget now because I want to push everything back to SharePoint. The item to be updated is going to be a lookup. We cannot simply use this item or something like that because we only have an ID. So I want to look up something from the department budget that its ID is equal to item ID. Now you know why I renamed those columns, because if I was using the same ID, how could you say ID equals ID? If you use this record, this record inside lookup can refer to lookup and we are inside for all. So if I use this record can refer to for all. Even if you can pull it off, it's quite a maintenance nightmare. So don't do that. Just rename the column names and do it properly. So now I have the row inside SharePoint that I want to update and the rest is history. You can do it yourself. So I can say Q1 budget is Q1 comma, and I can do exactly the same thing for Q2, 3, 4. And I just need to close the bracket for patch happily ever after. The only thing is that after everything is done, I can simply reset. And for the reset, I need to repopulate this table again because now everything is saved and I need to get a fresh one. And I also need to refresh this data. I have a button here that does the job. So if this is the case, let me use this button. And after this is saved and everything is complete, let me use select and call the icon five. Time to test. Let's test it. First of all, let's refresh everything, make sure everything is nice and fresh. So for the last record, I say 150, 200, 300, and 400. And I can push save. Apparently it worked. I can click on this one and everything is updated. The only thing that we are missing here, there is no indicator that which records are updated, but we have the undo option. So if I mess up something here, something here, and something here, I can click on refresh and everything goes back to normal. This is great. This lecture is already too long. Probably the only thing that we are missing is how we can give the feedback to the user that this record has been already modified. I guess you can do it yourself. If not, there's a tiny lecture that is coming up next and I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you will enjoy the course even more. Regardless, a like will be appreciated. And even more than that, if you push that subscribe button, you really make my day. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next video.